will um, quickly share i will quickly share my screen and uh, okay um aditya could you just stop recording uh, stop sharing yeah thank you all right so let me know if you guys can see all right so <clears throat> i i'll start with uh, first of all a welcome and a thank you for coming in here um this session is organized by hyperledger hyderabad and we are uh, we started our journey from 2017 and i'm sure uh, you know a lot of you might already have attended a lot of sessions we we are 43 live events and still counting uh, one of the largest community at least in india so we have around 30 1300 plus members across india and world um and we are also you know available on whatsapp group so if you like us to you know uh, uh, add you to that group you can you know mail us uh, the email ids are here and we'll also share it on the chat later and um, if you like to you know since we are a community where we we look forward to learn and expand so in case you want to be the next presenter you are most welcome you can reach out to me or kartike we both pull it this chapter and uh, i can't um, you know uh, uh, stop uh, talking uh, without uh, saying a word of thanks to vikram and kamlesh who had been extremely supportive of uh, arranging this discussions and you know um, helping us everywhere uh, because of them we are able to present this time as well um now i'm just stopping my uh, screen and uh, quickly want to introduce aditya Uh, i'm sure a lot of you might already be seeing the kind of work he is doing in the community um you know he's a he's a uh, a trainer and a coach at uh, udemy so you might be already seeing a lot of uh, sessions uh, arranged by him there uh, he is a very active maintainer of hyperledger labs project uh, with the half a decade of experience in blockchain development um he is an engineer blockchain engineer at walmart and i you know heartily welcome you aditya for a very fun ride and a learning session informative session from you so floor is all yours aditya thank you thanks ritu so uh, i will share my screen and probably let me know if you are able to see my screen so my screen is visible to you all yeah we can see it thanks yeah thank you ritu so uh, the topic for today's meetup is uh, is going to be uh, towards running hyperledger fabric network on kubernetes and uh, this time we are using a tool called hla populator and probably i will give more context about this tool like what this tool does and uh, why this tool was actually uh, created to solve some of the specific use cases so before that like i would uh, like to introduce myself so i am aditya and currently working as a blockchain engineer at walmart i am also a certified hyperledger fabric administrator and a kubernetes developer as well and uh, apart from that like i am also instructor at udemy so i have published couple of courses around the udemy in in the space of blockchain and kubernetes i am also the maintainer at hlf uh, hyperledger Hyper labs project uh, this hlf operator project so probably and today we are going to see this operator only and you can find me on this link like if you will just uh, google it, google this link you will probably find all the ways to reach out to me so uh, let's discuss about like what hlf operator is and probably then we will discuss like why uh, this op uh, this operator was created so we all know that uh, kubernetes and uh, hyperledger fabric they both are completely distributed systems and uh, probably managing these two distributed systems under one roof becomes very very much complicated when you have two different uh, distributed system they both are kind of uh, stand alone and you have to uh, bring these kind of system under one roof then it becomes very very much challenging so hlf operator is a kubernetes operator that is specifically designed for hyperledger fabric and it solves some of the uh, use cases around the fabric uh, and it is pretty much going to make your life uh, very very much easy 
this project is currently under Hyperledger Labs. So recently, last month only, we migrated this project under Hyperledger Labs. And all the operations that we are going to uh, see in today's demo, or whether you are going to set up it on your own as well, we will be using a Cube CTLHF plugin that comes along with this operator. Uh, and all the commands and all the operations that you will see, they will be through this kubectl HL plugin. So uh, I just want to uh, throw some light like why uh, this operator was uh, created. So we have already a couple of solutions available in the open source market. Like we have Bevel, uh, we have Argo based Helm chart, and we have a couple of uh, other uh, open source projects as well around it. So uh, this operator is solving some of the uh, specific use cases. Let's say uh, there are some organization which uh, already know Kubernetes, but they are not pretty much familiar with the fabric or ways to deploy it. And uh, in, the, in the organization, they are pretty much dealing with the Kubernetes manifest, those YAML files. So this operator provides a declarative way of creating those components. So pretty much here as well, you are dealing with those YAML files. And uh, or you are just writing those declarative commands, and the, pretty much the components are created for you, uh, like peers or ordering service channel. All those are created with just the help of one command. It provides an abstraction from the initial bootstrapping uh, of the nodes. So probably if you have uh, tried to set up this network on your local machine with the help of Fabrics sample examples, if you have tried to run the test network, you might have seen a lot of things uh, go when you run those scripts, uh, starting from generating those certificates, then creating the Genesis block and then joining the chain. So pretty much a lot of thing goes there, but uh, this provides a lot of abstraction and pretty much the commands are very straightforward and imperative. So you just hit a command. Let's say you want to create a channel. You just fire that command and channel is created for you. So you don't have to do a lot of uh, initial bootstrapping for you. This, this is done by the operator itself. This is based on Kubernetes. So this can pretty much work on any Kubernetes environment, whether it is on on-prem or cloud. So all you need is a Kubernetes cluster and you are pretty much good to go. This is highly customizable. And uh, in terms of customizability, uh, you can customize it for specific use cases. Uh, let's say you want to renew certificates uh, every year or within every six months, you can customize it. Or you want to increase the storage uh, that your peers or uh, CA servers or ordering nodes are using, you can pretty much do it. And also, uh, if you have any specific use case around it, you can pretty much customize the plugin and the operator. So that is uh, very straightforward. Uh, underneath hood, it is using the operator SDK. Uh, from the, I think that is from the Red Hat. So pretty much uh, you are interacting with the Kubernetes uh, operator and then uh, it uh, creates uh, components for you. So uh, uh, now I would like to discuss the basic functionality of a Kubernetes operator. And then probably we will see a high level component diagram of uh, this uh, HLF operator. So on the left side, uh, we have a user and user is pretty much interacting with the custom resources and the custom resources comes along with the operator. So when you install the operator, custom resources are created for you. Uh, basically the custom resource definitions are created for you and you create custom resources uh, using those definitions. And uh, in our case, the custom resources are peers, orders, certificate authorities and chain codes. And we have an operator. So operator is nothing just a Go program that is running on your Kubernetes cluster. And it, it has a reconciliation loop that runs uh, within the operator. So what uh, it does is it's, it basically subscribes or tracks the events uh, in the custom resources and uh, whatever event change it receives, it basically try to take decisions on those events. So uh, let's say uh, and it and basically try to uh, match your uh, desired state with the current state of Kubernetes cluster. So what I mean by this desired state and current state. So let's say you define a custom resource and you want to have, let's say two peers. And somehow uh, your network has only one peer. Maybe it is failing or uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have, like the community cluster does not have enough resources in terms of memory, CPU, or maybe disk. So then uh, maybe, it, maybe it, 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 it could be in a pending state as well. So this operator is, uh, it will try to match your current state and your desired state. So our desired state was to having two uh, peers in the network, but the current state uh, in the network is having one peer. So obviously this operator will try to recreate that peer or it will take necessary actions, whatever is required to make that uh, peer up and running. So this was the high level uh, overview of how operator works. And this is uh, this is applicable to any kind of operator, not HLF operator. This is the 
uh, working of any kind of operator. So operator basically tracks the custom resources that you create and uh, they subscribe to the events and they take necessary decisions according to those events and try to ma maintain the, your desired state with the current state of your cluster. So now uh, let's discuss the HLF operator. So on the right side, you can see we have a user machine component. And basically uh, this could be, uh, this machine uh, uh, is, is, is referencing here uh, a user who is uh, trying to interact with the uh, cluster or trying to interact with the operator. So it could uh, like the user can interact with the cluster either using the kubectl HLF plugin that we will see in today's demo or using the Kubernetes API. So Kubernetes has uh, like Kubernetes exposed REST APIs and you can use either those APIs to interact with the cluster or you can use some uh, uh, Kubernetes SDKs, client SDKs, like you can use client code library or uh, in Java as well, we have a library. So libraries are available pretty much in uh, all the uh, popular languages. So you can either use those APIs or you can use this kubectl HLF plugin. And uh, just to give you a context, this kubectl HLF plugin is also built over client go library, uh, which provides you a way to interact with the uh, with the cluster. So in near future, if you wish to, uh, like you don't want to use this kubectl plugin, you are free to you uh, go like underneath it is using the kube, uh, client go library and pretty much you can write a, a custom application on the top of that uh, kubectl, uh, that, that client go library and uh, interact with the community cluster. So uh, this kubectl plugin or your APIs, they are going to interact with your custom resources and they can be peer order or C or chain code as well. And uh, our operator has subscribed to those custom resource uh, updates. So any update, any update that is happening over these custom resources, HLF operator is tracking those resources and it is doing the necessary action. So actions could be in our case, it should be a create action. So let's say you create a custom resource uh, and the uh, operator receives that event and basically try to create a deployment uh, with those necessary details that you provide in the custom resource. It could be same, the same, the same could go with the order as well and the certificate authority as well. Oh, any questions uh, or so far? Um, no, I haven't got anything on the chat by the way. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so just to summarize this slide, so basically we, you can have either a kubectl HLF plugin or you can use client libraries or APIs to interact with the Kubernetes cluster and you can write your own application out of it. Like uh, for this project, for this operator, we wrote this kubectl HLF plugin and it is basically a client, uh, it, is in, it is a layer over client code library and we are using this to interact with the cluster. So pretty much you can use uh, your, uh, your own application out of it and directly interact with the cluster. So uh, now I would like to discuss some of the uh, features of uh, this operator. So uh, it helps you in creating the certificate authority. So you don't need to manage anything uh, pretty much like you, all you would be dealing is uh, you would be uh, mostly registering the identities and enrolling the identities. So managing of the certificate authority is done by the operator. It, the same uh, is done for the peers and ordering survey as well. So ordering service uh, creation or peers creation, those are done by the operator for you. You just fire a command and it will provision those resources for you. Uh, and uh, you don't have to manually go and provision the cryptograph materials. Uh, so with the help of just a single command, you can provision the crypto material, uh, like the certificate or any artifact you need, you can uh, create uh, them and uh, you, you don't have to uh, do a lot of setup before that. And operator also supports domain routing with the help of Istio. So you can give your uh, complete DNS name to your peers and uh, uh, your ordering service or your certificate authority. So you can expose them outside of the, your Kubernetes cluster using the help of uh, domain routing or Istio. It supports running, uh, it supports external chain code as well. And we will see this in the today's demo. Like I will be running the, uh, I will be installing the chain code as external chain code. 
and uh, currently uh, like this fabric supports version 2.2 plus so right now in today's demo i am going to show you the latest version which is 2.4 and uh, we will uh, like all of our peers and uh, ordering service they will be running on version 2.4 it also supports certificate renewal as well. So you have to just run a command and it will renew the certificate for you. And uh, uh, it works pretty much well for the peer certificate, but uh, when you are updating, uh, when you are renewing the order certificate, there is some manual uh, intervention that you have to do. Uh, yeah. And also I just like to add one more point here that uh, this operator uh, is in the operator, we are using the channel participation API. I think this was released in version 2.2. So you don't need to have a Genesis block in this uh, in this setup, and uh, pretty much like you, we will be starting with the, our application channel, and you don't need to have those Genesis block. And uh, we will be using like the order is also going to join the channel, and peers are also going to join the channel using that participation API. Yeah, Aditya, I I see a few couple of questions on the chat. So um, one is, uh, does this support Hyperledger 1.4? That's that's question number one. Hmm. Okay, so uh, it does not support uh, 1.4. We started with version two, and uh, in future as well, uh, we don't have any plan of supporting version 1.4 because uh, things were uh, things are like uh, pretty much different in 1.4. So the idea is to like we started this with version two, and uh, we will like uh, scale it uh, like whatever fabric or latest fabric version we will get, maybe two dot five or version three. We will uh, continue uh, on on the forward approach. Absolutely. And the second one is how do you handle the backup and recovery in case of a disaster? Okay. Yeah. Pretty much interesting question. And uh, this, I think this is a, this is a valid use case question. Uh, so this operator is not, uh, is not uh, designed to handle those use cases. This operator is, uh, is focusing or the idea of having this operator is to focus only on the, on the, on the cube, on the hyper fabric part, uh, and these, uh, the backup and, the uh, recovery, uh, they are pretty much out of the scope of this operator. But if you want to, uh, 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 set up uh, backup and recovery. There are pretty much uh, some solutions available in the open source and in the uh, some some paid solutions as well. Like you can use Velero, and uh, uh, I I have I have pretty much uh, tried Velero for backing up the this uh, fabric cluster using this operator, and it worked pretty much well. So uh, I have uh, like tried Velero, and I did a backup, and uh, basically I did a cloud uh, a cloud migration. So uh, in that case. Uh, my cluster was running in sub cloud A and I migrate that to cloud B with the help of Velero. Uh, that is an open source solution. And you have a couple of paid solutions as well. Like, uh, I think there is uh, one solution called Castin. So you can use those as well, but they come with uh, some cost. Sure, sure. Thank you. So, so can you use Velero uh, along with this uh, operator? So uh, the idea is, uh, so this, the whole intention of uh, having this operator, we just want to focus on the, on the on the HLF part, not on the backup and recovery. Maybe in future uh, we can think of this, but backup and recovery uh, is, is is a pretty vast topic, and I think uh, 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 that is very very much early for this operator to uh, incorporate it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so okay, I hope that answers your question. Um, and we have one more. Aditya, you want to take it now or maybe after your demo? We, we can so, park it if you like to. So, uh, yeah, after that, I have demo only. So, let me just uh, answer this one more question I oh. see in the chat. So, sure. uh, yes, yes, it does support unjoining of uh, 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 peers and channels because we are using the channel participation API and channel participation API works uh, in the joining and unjoining part. So, yes, it supports that feature. And this feature was not available in the, I think, in the prior version of Fabric. Uh, but with, uh, and if you are using channel participation API, only then you can use that uh, join and unjoin feature. So now uh, uh, let's jump into the demo. Uh, so before that, I would like to tell you the prerequisites uh, that you need to have uh, if you want to run this operator. So obviously you need a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, 
uh, where you will be running this operator. Then you need a kubectl command line. So this is the command line uh, using which you interact with your Kubernetes cluster. You need a Helm. So Helm is basically a package manager uh, that helps you in installing various Helm charts. Uh, it is similar to what you have in, uh, in Node.js, you have NPM or in Java, you have, uh, I think Maven. And you need a crew. So crew is basically a plugin repository. And uh, in the previous slides as well, we uh, saw about the kubectl plugin. So using this crew, we are going to install that plugin. Now, uh, I just want to uh, come or discuss this high level component diagram that we are going to see in today's demo. And this will be a, a overall setup uh, by the end of this demo, we will have uh, pretty much this kind of a setup. So we will be having two namespaces. And uh, so first namespace is the default. Second namespace is going to be the fabric namespace. And in the first namespace, which is a default namespace, there I am planning to have the HLF operator. And my operator is going to uh, reside on this namespace. In the fabric namespace, I will have all my organization, whether it is a peer organization or an ordering organization. So I will have two, or, uh, two peer organization, org1 and org2 and one ordinary organization. And inside the peer organization, uh, I will have two peers. So I will have org1 peer1 and org2 peer2. And similarly in org2 as well, I will have org2 peer1 and org2 peer2. Uh, I will have one anchor peer in both the organizations. So you see this, uh, this block marked as A, which means that it is going to be an anchor peer and one one anchor peer for both the organization. I will have one only one ordering node, but uh, you can have and number of ordering nodes uh, as per requirement. And the name of that ordering node will be odd hyper node one. We will have three CAs. Uh, so first one will be the org one CA, second one will be the org two CA, and the third one will be the ordered CA. So these CAs uh, will be responsible for issuing the certificate for the respective organization. Then I have one uh, my channel. So we have one application channel, which is my channel and pretty much all the peer organization or ordering organization, they are going to use that channel, uh, to make, uh, the transactions. We will be deploying one chain code, which is my CC. And, uh, this will be an external chain code. And for this demonstration, I have specially prepared the node.js part. Like, uh, we will be going to see the node.js chain code and I will come to this, uh, in the later part, like why I chose node.js only, uh, for the chain code part. Yeah, so now uh, I will share my terminal window and uh, probably uh, from there we can take it forward. So before that, uh, I would like to show you uh, that I have already created a community structure on the digital ocean because that was the fastest way for me to uh, create a community structure. And this is a two node community structure. And let me just download the cube config so that I can uh, interact with the community structure. Yeah, it is done. Now let me just move to terminal and uh, hope my terminal is visible to you. Like the font size is visible to you all. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm in one directory. Uh, I have already hit this directory and this is uh, HLFK8. And pretty much this directory has just one folder. If I show you, this is the fabcard folder. And this is a chain code part. I will come to this folder later uh, when we are actually dealing up the chain code. Uh, but apart from this, I have nothing in this folder. And uh, first thing, what I'll do is I will uh, basically set up my uh, cube CTL so that uh, I am able to connect to my Kubernetes cluster. So let me export the.
Um, sorry, guys. I think I think yeah. we can start. Right. So somehow, like my system got reported. I don't know. So uh, let me just go to the same folder. Yeah. And uh, uh, so the last thing that we did, uh, we were basically trying to export the uh, cube config variable so that we can use it along. Uh, like I can use it to interact with the cumulus system. So let me export it again. Yeah. So it got exported. Now let's see if. Uh, we can uh, connect with the Kubernetes cluster. So let me just run this command, kubectl get nodes, just to make sure that uh, we are connected to the cluster. Yeah, so you can see uh, we are connected to this cluster and uh, I have two nodes uh, up and running in this cluster. Now, uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to uh, basically add the operator uh, like we have to install the operator and before installing the, the operator we have to add the repository uh, the, the helm chart repository of it so let me just write the command for that so using this command uh, you can basically add the operator helm chart to your repository local repository and after that we can install the operator now let me install the operator. So using this command, which is helm install HLF operator and where we are specifying the version that we want to install. And this is the a chart. So let me just run this. So this is going to create a operator in the default namespace. And if you want to uh, install this operator in a different namespace, you can pass hyphen hyphen namespace flag and pass your namespace. So it got installed. Let's see if it is there or not. So we can see uh, we have the operator here and uh, it will take some time to create. But meanwhile, uh, we can move to the next step, which is we have to install the kubectl HLF plugin and that plugin we will get from the crew repository. So let me just install the plugin. So this is the command kubectl crew and then install HLF. Uh, you have to give the name of the plugin. So the plugin name is HLF. And this will install the HLF plugin onto your local machine. It is already installed, but if it is not available in your machine, it will get installed. Okay, so now uh, I think our uh, operator is up and running. Let's verify this. Yeah, so the operator is up and running. Now, uh, what we have to do is we will first try to grab the environment or the uh, storage class uh, because this operator needs a storage class when it is provisioning those resources for you. So let's, it should like the operator needs that knowledge that uh, on which storage class we want to create uh, the persistent volumes for those peers or uh, storage for order or CA. So let's uh, see what all storage class we have. So we have only one storage class, which is DO block storage. And uh, it uh, depends on the type of cluster you are using, the cloud provider you are using. And let me uh, just run this command. So this is going to uh, get the storage class and set it into one environment variable uh, with name SC. So if I just do echo SC, it should show me the, okay, I should be dollar. So it should show me that storage class. I think we are pretty much uh, good till here. Now uh, we can create a namespace because all of our fabric uh, components like peers, CAs, or uh, chain code as well, uh, they are all going to be uh, live in this fabric namespace. Perform in that namespace only. Yeah, so the namespace also got created. And now uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to create the CAs because uh, in any network, uh, first thing you need is you need to have the certificates and then only you can start the peers or order or do any kind of operation in the network. So I will uh, put the command for creating up a CA. So this is the command which will create the CA. Uh, let me just make you walk through this command. So this is the plugin uh, that we installed with the help of crew. And here we are uh, specifying that we need to create a CA. Here we're specifying the storage class. So if your Kubernetes cluster has multiple storage class, 
uh, you can pass the appropriate storage class as per your requirement. And remember, you uh, we just uh, set the value of this variable in the last command. And then we are specifying the capacity that how much capacity this uh, CA will get when it is actually bootstrapped. The name of the CA. So if I'm going to give the name uh, to this CA is Org1 CA, then I'm going to give the initial or the bootstrap identity. So if you remember, when you actually start the uh, uh, any CA or CA uh, in the in, in your local Docker network as well, using Fabric samples, you see that uh, initial bootstrap identity is uh, passed or required. So this is the same identity. And then we are specifying the password of it. And then we are specifying the namespace over which we want to create this CA. So this should create a CA. Uh, and now let me just create the CA for uh, org2 and orderer as well. So I will pretty much uh, uh, like run the both the commands at the same time, just to save some time. So just to summarize, so this is the uh, this the first command is going to create a CA for org2. You can see here, and the second command is going to create the CA for the order. This one. Yeah. Now we can just check if we have all the CAs up or not in the fabric namespace. Yeah, so you can see that they are still in creation phase because the operator is trying to provision the persistent volume basically underneath storage uh, for them. And we can check those storage as well. If I do kubectl get pv in the, like let's do all namespaces. So you can see it is basically uh, provisioned, uh, it has provisioned these persistent volumes uh, for uh, those uh, CAs. So you can see ordered CA is bounded to this persistent volume. Or one is bounded to this persistent volume and order org two is bounded to this persistent volume. And these are the storage that we specified in the command as well. And this is the storage class. Just to confirm, let's see if the peer, uh, the CAs are up or not. Yeah, so you can see uh, CAs are up or not. Okay. So now uh, we are done with the CA part, like the CA setup part is done, but we have to uh, issue certificates for the components. And then uh, that we'll see uh, in a couple of uh, minutes. Now uh, let me export some environment variable and these environment basically, uh, these variables are referencing to the peer image that you want to use in their version. So uh, like I initially told you, that we are going to use the version 2.4. So I'm using the version, uh, the peer image 2.4.3 and the order version is also 2.4.3. And we will be uh, passing these environment variables in the next command, whenever we are going to create the peer or orderer. Okay, I, I can take up one question. Okay, so there is one question uh, with uh, Kubernetes. You can, you can, you can uh, take the questions at the end. I'm just typing okay, okay. it out right now. Okay, you, you, you sure, can sure, sure. carry on with your flow. Okay, okay. so now uh, we are done with the CA creation part, but we need to have the identity. It's like uh, peer identity. So whenever uh, in Fabric, you know that everything is permissioned and you need to have certificates uh, to access those uh, those resources. So let's create an uh, identity for the peer. And if you see this command, this is here we are registering uh, a peer. And uh, here we are specifying the name of the CE, uh, which is going to issue. Then here we are specifying the or uh, your peer name. We are specifying this for that identity. Then we are specifying the type of identity. So in Fabric, we have a couple of uh, different type of identity, like uh, I think a peer admin and order and client as well. Then we have the enrollment secret of uh, uh, the CA. We are, MS, uh, we are going to uh, receive the, the certificates. Then uh, I'm passing the namespace on which uh, uh, we have the CA running. So you can see uh, it, we, the registration is successful. Now in the similar way, uh, I will register all the four P will uh, get their identities. So this is for the 
Og on pier two. Let me do it for Og two pier one. This for the Og two pier one. You can see, and the last one is Og two pier two. Okay, so all the four peers uh, got uh, registered. So now we can create the actual peers. So let me put up the command for that. So this is the command which is going to create a peer for us, and here we are specifying the enrollment ID identity, uh, the one that we just registered, the MSP, and then we are specifying the uh, peer password and the capacity for that uh, peer. Then we are spec also specifying the peer name, and then we are specifying the CA against which we got this identity. And one more thing. So here we are specifying the state database as couch database. The default value for this is level DB, but if you not specify, then it will key, uh, it will take the default value as level DB. But you specify this as the couch DB, then it is going to create a couch DB container as well. Here we are specifying the peer image action. Uh, these are the same environment variable that we just exported a uh, few minutes back. So hope everyone is able to uh, follow me here. Yes, definitely. Okay. So now I will uh, quickly create, the, I will use the same one to create the org one peer two and uh, the remaining as well peer like the peer for the so let's put the command for them quickly. So this command is for org two p o one, and I will show you the pods as well. Uh, once we are done with the peer creation, I will show you that we have actually these pods available. So we can check if we have all the ports. So our ports are just coming up. So we can see we have port for or one peer one. We have port for org two peer two, and we have port for org two peer one. And in a couple of uh, seconds, we should have port for org two peer two as well. So it will take some time, uh, but. Meanwhile, what we can do is, I can show you that uh, that underneath, uh, this is just a deployment that is created by the operator with all the values that we passed uh, through the command line. So if I show you the deployment, you can see uh, these are all the deployments that we have created so far. And you can see 
uh, Og2 peer 2 is also uh, coming up. Uh, so far, uh, uh, we have covered the CA part. We did the CA setup. We did the peer setup. And now uh, let's try to create the admin identity so that we can actually make uh, use make we can actually do some transactions. It could be joining the channel or it could be installing the chain code. All those transactions we can do with the help of that admin identity. So first we will register identity and then we will enroll that identity. So this is the command to register the identity. So we are basically registering an entity against this CA. So we'll uh, get the identity from the or one CA. This is the username uh, for that identity. This is the admin password and the type of identity that we want to create. So we are going to create an admin identity. And remember when we were, uh, when we actually created the identity for the peers at the time we used peer as the type. This is the enrollment uh, details of the CA. And then we are specifying the uh, MSP against which these identities are going to be issued. So this uh, is going to register that identity in uh, with uh, or one CA. And now once we have done the registration, we can actually enroll it. So in enrollment, uh, we basically get the certificates of that identity. So I will show you like how we are actually getting the certificate and how we are going to use those certificates. So using this command, which is HLF C enroll, we are enrolling the identity and here we are passing pretty much the same details. Uh, there is one difference in this command, which is CA name. And uh, just one thing I just want to add here that when we actually create the CA uh, internally, the operator create two, two kinds of CAs there. So it creates a signing CA or and the second one as a TLS CA. So here we are going to get the signing certificate. So that's why I specified the CA here. And uh, in the order section, you will see that we will actually do the enrollment for both for the signing certificate and for the TLS certificates as well. And this is the output file where our certificate are going to be stored in our local machine. These are the MSP details and the namespace over which we have the components. And uh, if I do and like uh, if I do LS here, uh, probably you should see one uh, or one hyphen peer file. So if I do ls, you can see I have org one peer dot uh, ml, and this is contains the certificate. This is the private key and the certificate signing certificate of that admin entity. Let me do a cat of that. Yeah, so you can see I have the certificate and I have the private key for that as well. Okay, now uh, let me do the same uh, thing for the org two as well. Like let me try to get the uh, registration and. Uh, identity like the registration and the enrollment part for the admin entity, but this time for the Octo. So I'm pretty much running both the commands at the same time. The first command is the registration command. Uh, the command is pretty much same, but the major change is on the name. So this uh, certificates will be uh, like the entity will be registered with Octo CA and the MSP ID is Octo MSP. And the enrollment command is also same, but the output file is different and the org details are different here. So if I do LS here, uh, you should be able to see uh, org 2 hyphen peer.yam. So you can see we have this file as well. And again, this contains the certificate for admin, uh, which is registered under uh, org 2 MSP or uh, org 2 CA. Okay, so now uh, we are pretty much done with this part. Uh, now we can do the order setup and uh, just like we did for the peer. So in order as well, we have to first register the order identity and then we can create the ordering node. So the same kind of thing we did in the peer as well, like we first registered the peer so that we have the certificate for that. And then we uh, actually uh, created the peer nodes. So using this command, we can register an order and uh, this is the same command uh, what we did for the peers uh, just a couple of things are changed here like the order name change got changed the user got name got changed the secret obviously and the type of identity got changed so remember i was telling you that we have four kind of identities so peer order admin and client and then we are passing the enrollment uh, certificate and then we are passing the order msp and then the, obviously the namespace. So this is going to register the order identity and then we can uh, create the order uh, using this identity.
So here, uh, using this command, we are actually going to create an order. And here we are specifying the storage class. We are specifying the order ID. And this is the same ID that we use in the very last command, uh, which for which we did the registration, the MSP details and the enrollment password and the capacity for this order. So you can customize all these parameters as per your requirement. Let's say you feel that 2GB is not enough for your use case. Probably you can try to increase it to 5GB or 10GB of storage. Then the name of the ordering node and then the CA name uh, from which it is going to pull that identity. Then we are specifying the image version, uh, image uh, name and the image version that we exported as an environment variable. So this should create an ordering service for us. Yeah, so the ordering service got created. Let's do uh, get pods and see if this order is getting created or not. Yeah. So we can see uh, it, is, it is creating. And uh, meanwhile, we can move to the next step which is uh, we have to get the order admin as well. So uh, in the previous commands, we uh, we did the, we, we tried to uh, register our admin identity for both the organization, but now we have to do uh, this thing, the same thing for the ordering as well, for the order organization as well. So let me just clear up this. And now we can register an admin. Uh, so this is the same command. Uh, this 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 pretty much same what we uh, did for the organization uh, admin, like org one admin or org two admin. Uh, just the names are getting changed, like the parameters are uh, going to be changed. This that uh, we are getting the identity from ordered CA. Then the MSP ID is also changed, uh, but rest of the things are same. Okay, so now uh, we have registered an admin entity, but uh, we need to get the signing cert as well as the TLS certs. So to get the signing certs, obviously we have to enroll the user and uh, while we enroll the user, only that time we get the certificates of them. So here you can see the CA name is, I'm passing the name as CA because in this command, we are going to get the signing certificates and the output or the, the certificates are stored in this file, uh, ordering service.yml, admin ordering service.yml. So let me run this. And uh, once if I do ls here, you should uh, be able to see admin ordering service.yml file. So if I do ls here, we can have, yeah, so we have uh this ordering uh, admin ordering service dot yaml similarly uh, we will try to get the tls certificates for this admin so the command uh, this command and the above command if you'll see this command and the one that i've just uh, uh put it here so you can see uh, this is pretty much same uh, the only you can see here is on the ca name side so this time we are just trying to get that T certi. So we pass the CA name as TLSE. And in the previous command, we were trying to get signing certificates. And uh, uh, the output is going to be stored in some different file. So the output is going to be stored in admin hyphen TLS hyphen ordering service dot in. So if I do ls, you can see we have the admin TLS ordering service. Okay. So now uh, once we are done with this, we can just quickly get grab the connection profile uh, so that we can interact with the network. So this is the command, and here you are, here we specify the organization which we want to uh, make the part of connection profile. So only uh, these organization uh, will be there in our connection profile. If I do cat of network config, which is my output file. So you should see a uh, connection proof. You can see we have uh, these three organization and this is the uh, standard connection profile that we have with the, that we uh, use with our application to connect with the fabric network. 
okay now uh, we will do one more thing so we will basically try to add the user uh, basically the, the the admin user that we created in uh, in the previous command to this connection profile and uh, for that like i would uh, like to sh open my vs code here So uh, this is the VS, this is my VS code. And this is the network connection profile that we have here. And you can see uh, that in the, in the organization section, uh, we have a user's property, but right now this is empty. So we are basically going to populate this, uh, this, this, this field uh, from, the, kind of from these, uh, these admin uh, certificates that we create in the commands. So this one we are going to put there and say same, uh, like we are going to put org to peer dot yaml in this connection profile under the org to organization so that we can uh, make the transaction so for that uh, we have the com we have one command uh, there in the kubectl plugin as well and uh, you can either do this uh, this thing manually or you can use the uh, command line so let me clear up this and let me try to run that command so this is go basically going to add the this file which was having the admin identity for the org one into this network config under the name admin and for this msp uh, what i meant with this command is let me show you so if i show you my network config here in the ordering section or uh, in the on the organization section you can see in the org one msp we have now the user section got populated with the admin certificate and its private key similarly we will do the same thing for the org2 as well like uh, right now you can see the org2 uh, user section is empty now but we will uh, populate this as well So it should uh, have been populated there as well. You can see the org2 section is also got populated. Okay, so now uh, we are done with the connection profile and now we can uh, leverage this connection profile to create the channel and the uh, organization joining as well. So let's try to create a channel. Uh, So this is the command which is going to create a channel uh, with name uh, with the output as my block uh, my channel dot block and the name of the channel is my channel and these are the organizations which are going to be part of the channel so remember if you have ever tried to set up a a, a network uh, on your local machine uh, you use a config txt.yml file and there you specify all the members who are the part of that channel or, or the consortium so this is the same thing uh, that we are doing but you don't have to with that config txt.yml file you just write this command and it will do the underneath stuff for you so the channel got created and uh, we should have one my channel dot block file here as well this file you can see now we can make our order to join this channel and uh, remember uh, when we uh, register, when we register the admin identity for the uh, for the uh, ad, uh, for the order, we basically did the two kind of enrollment there. First one was for the CA, uh, the normal signing identity, and second one was the TLS uh, TLS certificates as well. So in this command, uh, the next command that I'm going to run, uh, that will be going to use that uh, admin ad or the, the the TLS identity. Uh, in order to uh, join the channel. So here you can see the identity that we are passing is the admin TLS. This is the TLS one, not the normal uh, signing certificates. So remember, uh, so hope I answered uh, uh, the question in the chat as well. Okay, so now uh, order has joined the channel and uh, I would like to show the logs of the order as well. Uh, let me do, let me get the pods. So we have ordering node here. Let's try to get the logs of this. K get log or K logs. Pod name and then the namespace is fabric. Yep, 
so you can see uh, we have some blocks here and you can see it joined the channel uh, my channel and the concentrator is one uh, is five uh, like uh, why we got the concentrator as one because we have only one ordering node and you can see uh, the order has started in the raft uh, mode as well and uh, it has pretty much like started listening to uh, my channel now i can clear this Okay, now I can make my peers to join the channel as well. So the command is uh, uh, this. So we are basically joining up the channel. We have to pass the channel name. We have to specify the network config. We specify we have to specify the user who is actually going to perform this activity. So in our case, that is the admin entity that we just add in the network config and the peer, the target peer, which is going to join the channel. So this should, uh, uh, like our org one peer one should join the channel. So it has joined the channel. And now I'm going to uh, run uh, the same command for uh, remaining three peers. Uh, let me run the command in a one go. So now all the three peers are remaining peers are going to join the channel. So org one peer two is also going to join channel org to peer one and org to peer two is also going to join the channel. So you can see uh, all the three has joined the channel and we can see the logs of them as well, but uh, I think uh, we are limited on the time. So I'm not going to uh, show the logs now. Maybe if we have the time, then we can see. So now uh, we have, uh, so now so far what we have done, the, the CA, we have done the uh, peer part, like the peer starting of the peer, we have done the ordering part as well. We get the ordering service. Then we did the channel creation part, channel join part is also done. And now the next step is we have to add uh, our peers as anchor peers. So remember, if you if you recall the diagram that I showed, here yeah, you can see I am going to add org one peer one and two peer two as the anchor peer. We're not able to see, we were not able to see that diagram if you're showing a diagram. Okay, okay, let me show you again. So now, can you see? Yeah, it is visible now. It okay. is so this, visible. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, this is the diagram uh, that uh, I was talking about. So we have org one, peer one, and org two, peer two. They will be acting as anchor peer in our network. And uh, so far, uh, our all of our peers has joined the channel. And, but now the next part we are going to do, we are going to make them as the anchor peer, uh, this peer org one, peer one, and org two, peer two. So this is the command. Uh, uh, the org one, peer one, as uh, the anchor peer uh, on this channel, which is my channel, and the behavior is passing the network config, and the identity, which uh, we, registered uh, uh which got added into our network config as well so this should add our this peer org one peer one as the anchor peer and similarly uh, we have to do this for the org two peer one as well it's up to you you can make both the peers as anchor peer as well but to make it very much simple i have uh, i'll like for organization. Yeah, so both of them has uh, joined the, uh, like they are there already part of shell, but now they are the anchor peer as well. So now uh, uh, we are done with the anchor peer setup as well. Now we can do the chain code setup and uh, we are doing, we are setting up the chain code as external chain code. So probably the steps that uh, uh, you see uh, might be different. But if you have done the external chain code setup any time uh, in the past, you, you, you can recognize those steps. So I'm exporting the chain code name. I'm keeping the chain code name as my CC. Then I will uh, create a meta uh, metadata.json. And uh, this is required case of external chain code. And okay, let me just run this command again. Yeah, so let me clear this. And here you should see this meta 
data dot json and this is nothing just a, a, a environment variable that we exported uh, the mycc this has just a simple two line json file now uh, we have to create a connection uh, dot json as well uh, that will hold our uh, chain code address or the chain code service address that peers are going to use to connect to this chain code so here also uh, if you see we got this file which is connection.json and if i do cat of connection.json you can see that this is a three liner json here we are specifying our chain code name and uh, the port over which this chain code is running now we have to create some uh, tar files or the archives uh, that will be installed as uh, uh, they will be required when we are actually installing the chain code the first uh, thing that we will do is just uh, that connection dot json file and uh, uh, put it in uh, into this code dot uh, tar dot uh, zz file so it is going to uh, basically archive this file and create a code dot tar dot zz as output you can see here we should have this file which is code dot tar dot uh, zz now uh, what we have to do is we have to basically uh, run a tar command again, but uh, this uh, we uh, take this metadata dot JSON, and uh, along with this we have to take this code dot tar dot JSON and uh, put all these uh, these two uh, files into one file, and I will call it as uh, my uh, my channel external uh, tar dot gz. So basically, that is an ar archive, and this is the standard process that we do with the external chain code. So nothing fancy here. And if I show you, uh, we should have one uh, mycc external.tz. This contains basically uh, our metadata.json uh, and uh, this file, which is uh, code.tar.gz. Now let's calculate the package ID uh, because we will be needing the package ID as next commands. So this is, uh, this is coming from the plugin itself. So here we are. Uh, using the calculate package ID function uh, that is available in the in the plugin and we are specifying our chain code name we are specifying the language so I told you that uh, initially that I am going to use the node.js as the language for my chain code and then we are specifying the label or your chain code name so if I do echo uh, there of package ID we should have the package ID you can see we got the package ID uh, now we can actually install the chain code and uh, and when actually when we are installing in the chain, uh, we have to install this archive, uh, the the archive that we just created. This one, my uh, my channel, hyphen external dot tz. So we have to install this. So uh, for the demo, I am going to install only in the one one pair of each uh, of both the organization. So this is going to install the this archive. Here I am giving the path the network config file and the language this is the chain code label this is the user who is going to make the transaction and the target peer over which i want to install this chain code but this is not actually installing of the chain code we are not actually installing the actual chain code here rather we are uh, defining the definition of the chain code to our uh, peer or uh, peers that uh, you will near future you will receive a chain code with these parameters and this will be the uh name and uh label so it got installed now let me install this into the second uh peer which is uh, org2 peer one so you can see the target peer here is org2 peer one okay uh, yeah actually uh i can show you okay so now uh i just want to uh, uh tell you that like why i chose node.js only uh, like I, I, why I chose Node.js for this demonstration. Uh, the reason uh, why I chose Node.js for this external chain code or for this meetup is uh, because uh, in the fabric samples, uh, we have the example only for the uh, for the Golang chain code uh, and in the internet as well, I tried to find out there is uh, very few examples that are available for the Node.js uh, external chain code. And I have received this queries quite a on LinkedIn and in uh, through other mediums as well, that they, uh, they 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 don't have any idea of setting up the Node.js chain code as external chain code. So that's why I show I'm going to show you here. So let me open my VS Code uh, just to show you that what exactly I have uh, in the chain code part. So remember in the initial 
folder here and this is the chain fabric samples nothing fancy here this is the sample uh, chain code that i just copy pasted from the fabric samples fab car chain code same structure i took here uh, i i made a few modification to this so first is this docker file because when you are running the chain code uh, as external chain code you need to dockerize it so i have uh, created a docker file out of it and the second thing is on the package.json file so here in the start script uh, i have made it to start it as a as a chain code server not as the normal uh, uh, using the legacy method where we were not running the chain external chain code so only two modification i've done i modified this start script and the docker file so i had this docker file and this is uh, what uh, we are going to deploy in today's demo as well this fabcar chain code i have already dockerized this and i have already published this chain code into my uh, uh, docker hub repository so i'm not going to build the chain code here and push it uh, in onto the docker hub because i think we are already uh, running short of time so now uh, i can deploy the chain code so here in the deploy chain code part i have to pass my chain code name so this is the external chain code uh, command, which is going to deploy the chain code. I'm specifying my chain code image. So what you will have to do when you are building your own chain code, you just dockerize it, basically build the image and push it to Docker up and you can, uh, you can uh, uh, reference your image here. If you have image, like if it is on the private repository, like it is in the private Docker hub repository or in some any private hub repository, you can basically pass the image pull secrets along with this command. So we have a flag for that as well, where you can pass the image pull secret. We are specifying the chain code name here, the namespace over which we want to install the chain code. And this is the package ID that we exported as an environment variable and rest is the replica. So how many replicas of this chain code we want to have? So I just need only one replica. So uh, I will take up the questions at the end. Uh, so you can you can pose the questions, but uh, I'm going to take the questions at the end only. So now if I see, uh, if I do get pods in the fabric namespace, we should have one uh, MyCC, this one as well, MyCC uh, chain code that is running as a container or a pod. Okay, so now we have installed the chain code. Uh, now it's time to approve the chain code and uh, in approval, only one organization is going to approve the chain code. So from one uh, we have to do we have to get one approval from both the organization so uh, this is the command which is going to approve the chain code we are passing the network config file the identity that is going to take this action the target peer uh, and the package ID, and here you have to pass the version in the sequence number. So anytime in Fabric, when you install the chain code or you when, when you approve the chain code, you have to specify this version in the sequence ID. Uh, that is uh, pretty much helpful when you are actually upgrading up the chain code. Then here we are specifying the uh, policies. So these are the pretty much standard uh, policies that we use. So here I am keeping the OR as the endorsement policy and the chain code against which uh, this uh, chain code is going to be installed. So this should approve the chain code from a uh, first organization, which is org one. And then we can get the approval from the second organization as well. So this time the target peer is org two peer two. So yeah, so approval is done. Uh, now we are left with the chain code commit part and then we can simply invoke and query the chain code. So let me put the command to commit the chain code. So this is the command. And I told you that only one organization is going to commit the chain code. So here we are passing the MSP ID, the user and the version uh, and the sequence number and the chain code name. And this is the policy uh, that we specified in the approval process as well. Then I'm passing the channel name. And uh, with this command, we should be able to uh, uh, basically commit the chain code. Yeah. So it got committed successfully. And now uh, we can simply invoke and query the chain code. So let me uh, just first invoke the query. Uh, let me just do a invocation first and then we can do the query. So uh, this is the command, which is uh, HLF chain code invoke. You pass the connection profile. You pass the admin identity here or the user entity. You pass the target peer uh, who is going to take this operation and you specify the chain code name and the channel name. 
And after that, here we are passing the chain code related details like the function which you want to invoke from the chain code and the arguments you want to pass. So using hyphen a flag, you can specify the arguments. So the fabcar chain code that I installed that has a create car function and that needs five uh, parameters. So I think first one is the ID. Second one is the, I think, make, then model, then color, and the owner. So I'm passing all the five uh, uh, parameters here, and this should invoke the chain code, and I, sh I should get the transaction ID in return. Here. Yeah, so it got uh, the transaction got initiated. We got the transaction ID. And if you try to query the chain code, so uh, here the difference is HLF chain code query. This time, instead of invoke, it is query. Then rest of the parameter is same. And here you are passing the function, the chain code function and the argument. And uh, one thing is there that this, uh, I'm passing the empty parameter here because this uh, plugin expects you to pass at least one parameter and you have this this flag is actually mandatory in the you know, in the case so you have to pass it anyway so that's why i'm passing the default uh, as a empty parameter but it does not have any significance with this function so this should show me the record that we just inserted with these details like the yeah, so we got the records, we got the key, the key was 100 or the ID was 100. And then we got the color, uh, the make, the model and the owner. We got all those things. Let's try to uh, run one more function. I think that was query car, I'm not sure. And here, let me pass the car ID. Yeah, so we got just one record. So in the previous uh, one, we were getting an array in the return, but this time it is our object. Uh, and yeah, it is working pretty much fine now. Uh, now, I think uh, I have covered most of the stuff, like uh, we have seen the CA setup part, we saw the peer setup, we saw the order setup, and then we did the channel part where we joined the channel and installed the channel, uh, joined the channel and installed the chain code as well. And then we did the query and invocation part as well. So I think, yeah, I'm uh, pretty much good here. Uh, yeah, so just one thing I just want to show you here is that uh, there are some uh, more commands as well that I just want to show you. And uh, these are uh, commands that uh, you might not be needing frequently, uh, but it's good to know these commands as well. So this is the command, which is which shows you the leisure height or the number of blocks each uh, peer has. So this is the command, which is channel top. And uh, then uh, you specify channel name, and then you specify the admin, and you specify the peer uh, which using which we will be going to make this uh, a transaction or the or you're, you're going to query the ledger. So it should, it should show you all the uh, peers with, uh, with their channel height as well. So you can see, we have set, uh, you can see we have seven blocks here, and uh, like uh, we have the height of um, seven. So all of them has the seven uh, blocks with them. Let me clear this. Uh, one more thing I just want to show is, and I think the next command is going to be uh, pretty much useful for you. And this is uh, mostly required when you are actually doing some modification onto the channel. You want to do a channel update process, so. This command is basically going to inspect on your channel and then it is uh, using the connection profile and it will uh, like I'm showing the response in this mychannel.json file and we'll see like what this mychannel.json have. So this, this basically this will have your channel detail, all the channel detail or this is basically a channel block uh, which is required when you are doing the channel updates. So let me show you mychannel.json. So this is the same uh, JSON file that you can see, uh, which we uh, get when we fetch the channel, uh, when we fetch the config uh, block or the channel block. So you can see we have the uh, channel group 
and then we have the OR1 MSP. Similarly, we will have the OG2 MSP as well. And these are their uh, certificates. Then we have the OG2 MSP as well. And we should uh, see the consenters as well, which are basically uh, uh, related to the ordering service. So if I try to search consenter, yeah, so here you can see the consenter and we have only one consenter because we were having only one ordering node. So you can see it's client certificate, server certificate and the host over which this uh, uh, order is running and its port as well. So I think I am uh, done with uh, the demo. Uh, I just want to show you the logs as well, or let me uh, do one thing. Let me show you the CouchDB UI as well, uh, so that uh, we can see that data is actually persisting in the CouchDB. So if I do get pods in the fabric namespace and the, the CouchDB pod, uh, pod or the container is within the uh, within the peer uh, within the peer pod. So we have to use that uh, to uh, to get the data. So if I do port forward, port forward, and then I can give the pod, the pod name, this was the pod name that is running in fabric namespace. And I want to expose, I want to port forward on port five, nine, I think eight. Yeah. This is the port for couch TV. So if we go to browser, And here we should see, I have to use hyphen underscore utils as well. So the details are couch. Yeah, so this is the couch DB interface. And here you can see, uh, we have one record that we actually inserted into the database. Okay, yeah. So I think I'm uh, done with my side. Uh, I can now take up the questions if there is any. Yeah, there are a couple of them if you can see it on the chat window. Yeah, okay, so let me. So first question I can see is, uh, I think there is one question, why do we need uh, why do we require enroll order twice uh, with CA and TLS? -E? Okay, so uh, whenever uh, uh, so we needed this uh, TLS and uh, signing certificate for the order when we were actually joining up the channel. So at the time you need the TLS certificates as well. The uh, general participation API requires you to have a TLS connection uh, while you are actually communicating with, uh, uh, with 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 the different components. So that's why we need the TLS certificate. Okay, the next question is, do we have any UI instead of CLI? Okay, so there is one open source project that is uh, that we are actually uh, doing on and, and uh, we don't have any much plans for that. We, we tried it as a, as a kind of a POC. And yes, uh, that, that, that tool is basically uh, right now uh, give you a view state, like you can see the, all the components, but it, it does not have the capability of actually creating up the network from the UI. So, if I if my screen is visible, let me try to show you, or let me just put on the other screen. So I will uh, once I will find it, I will just post it in the chat the UI part of it. But yeah, but uh, that is that is not a, uh, our primary uh, area of focus. That project uh, we did that, uh, and 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 uh, this I think the CLI uh, that we are giving at, as the part of this operator that is I think uh, pretty much customizable, and you can customize it as per your need. So I don't think so. Uh, the UI that uh, that we are building or uh, that that we are planning to build uh, that might be different for your use case as well. So if you if you want to have some different kind of user interface. Maybe you want to have, uh, you want to provision something automatically, or you want to give some extra options to you, user, uh, that is uh, up to you, I guess. Okay. 
so any other questions do we have how do we delete test data from the network so what do you mean by test data like i'm not uh, sure uh, what test data means uh, here so if you can just let like uh, tell me what do you mean by test data i can probably help you i think maybe we, we, we cannot delete anything from here temporarily we can delete but when you restart the couch db you will be getting the data back if i if i'm not wrong yes yes so uh, yeah so uh, deletion uh, so if you see uh, if i show you my terminal window you can see that all of our uh, uh, resources they are using uh, pvcs uh, we they are they are actually bounded to uh, PVC. So even if I delete any pod, or let's say they it get deleted uh, due to some reason, some out of memory or any anything happens, any bad happens, it is automatically going to attach to the same persistent uh, uh, volume. So you are never losing the data. Like accidentally, if you if you, if you delete something, you will still have the data with you because under storage is persistent volume, not the actual file system of that uh, pod. Okay, there is one more question. How to connect one node from Azure, one from uh, AWS? Okay, so I I have made a, a video on this uh, uh, on my YouTube channel. I think uh, that will that would be a pretty much uh, a better way for you to understand this. But yeah, this is pretty much possible. You can have uh, uh, two different Kubernetes cluster, and you can uh, you you can basically uh, make them uh, join to a single channel. So I have I have, I have this uh, video uh, onto the uh, on on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can like uh, get more details from that there i have one more slide as well uh, this is more related to uh, uh, this part where i i have some links uh, to show you so this is the link for the repository uh, the uh, the HLF operator and the, you can like feel free to create a feature request or you can start the project if you feel this is worth and you can find me on these links so using this link you can pretty much find me anywhere like uh, you can find me on linkedin twitter anywhere uh, you can book a call with me as well and for this meetup i have uh, created a udemy discount coupon as well so this coupon is applicable on all my courses so pretty much you can use this coupon to avail the course at a discounted price okay i got some in that uh, in the time of deployment we check the chain code with some sample data uh, so you mean that uh, when you actually, uh, uh, when you, uh, I'm not able to understand like oh, what uh, does this mean like? Okay, I think this is this is the connect connection to the question on how delete how to delete the test data. So I think Anju means that the test data which is created at the time of some deployments. We are we are not creating a test yes. data anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so on chain code, uh, if you'll see, uh, like I just, I just created a one transaction and that I uh, did, uh, I like when I had to do the transaction only then, uh, only that moment I basically created the transaction. And before that we were not having any data. So if you see my couch DB here as well, I have only one record and, uh, this record I just created just to showcase you the invocation part. So apart from that, we don't have any test data anywhere. Uh, in the chain code and this this pretty much depends on how you have structured your chain code as well so if you want your chain code to have some test data let's say you uh, as soon as your uh, chain code starts you want to uh, write some data to the ledger you can pretty much do it but again that is on the chain code part not on this operator that is the logic of your chain code that you have written in a such a way that you want to uh, put some test data as soon as your chain code starts Okay, I have to show you one more thing. So, uh, if I can. So, there is one client uh, example integrations as well I have done. So, you, you can see this is the operator uh, repository. And uh, here is one example for this for like uh, uh, created two applications one for the Go and one for the Node.js. So, you can use either you can use Go library. 
for the fabric, or you can use the Node.js library for the uh, fabric to interact with your Kubernetes cluster. You can uh, uh, pretty much uh, register an identity, enroll an entity, invoke the code. So pretty much you can do anything uh, with the same connection profile that we saw in today's demo as well. So here you have to put your connection profile. How do you maintain a backup for PVC and the application factor? Okay, so the backup uh, thing is out of scope of this HLF operator. This operator is focusing only on the fabric part and backup and uh, uh, or disaster recovery, they, they comes under, uh, they are there outside of the scope of this operator because they apply not only to this operator, but to your Kubernetes cluster. So I would suggest you that you can uh, explore tools like Velero. So there is one tool Velero uh, that is a open source tool and widely used. And uh, I also have one video around it on my YouTube channel. So probably you can check it out uh, uh, where I tried to do the cluster migration uh, from, I think I did that I did from uh, DigitalOcean to Azure. So I make it migrate the entire data uh, uh, between those two clusters. And for this operator as well, I have used the Velero as well in one of the use cases. Yeah, let me put it on the chat. So you can use that uh, Velero tool to uh, do the backup and uh, recovery as well. You can, you can basically do the scheduled backup with Velero as well. Okay, great. I think um, if there are no further questions, we can close this. Um, thank you so much, Aditya. We can't thank you enough for spending time and helping all of us understand about this. Thank you, Ritu. Yeah. Probably you, if you, uh, anyone, if needed this thing, uh, they can probably yes. take a screenshot uh, of this. Sure. Like the discount coupon is and the links are pretty much here. So you can feel free to check out this repository and start if you find this, this is helpful. Uh, hi, Aditya. I'm Harzi. This is the last thing I just wanted to check. Like uh, this a session is recorded, right? So uh, where can we get this? So I think on the uh, YouTube channel, this will be posted. So probably from uh, there, you can get it. Yeah, we'll be sharing that, Harsh. Uh, maybe on the meetup um, page itself. We'll share that. Yeah, we'll okay, be okay. posting yeah. it on our Thanks. LinkedIn and it will sure. be uh, uploaded on a Hyperledger official YouTube channel. And please follow our uh, LinkedIn page. It will be available right there. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Adidas.